ready and then I'll sc screen share and get going. You should be good. Cool. Okay. I'll start by sharing and then we'll jump into it. Okay. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Path to Creative Director, part of Midwest Design Week and put on by AIGA Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Louisville, and Toledo. AIGA is a nonprofit organization with over 70 chapters across the US focusing on cultivating our design and creative communities for good. We are so thankful that you're here with us, learning, listening, and getting inspired together. Our theme this week is culture, a word representing our beliefs, shared values, learned behaviors, and traditions. We aim to provide inclusive and engaging events focused on the power of design and diversity. Today, we have some incredibly talented and good people talking about their path to becoming creative directors. Before we jump in, I'd like to say thank you to our sponsors for this week. Because no kidding, we really could not have done this without them. These sponsors care about the creative community and see these events as vital for our cities right now. I'd also like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Stark. I'm the Uniting People Director for AIGA Indianapolis. Creative Director at Westcom, and you could have guessed it, I'll be the moderator today. Um, if you have any technical difficulties, hang on with us. We probably just forgot to like close out Photoshop while on Zoom. Please ask any questions you might have in the YouTube live stream or Slack channel. Um, we'll be able to answer some of those at the end of the panel discussion today. We have a section for Q&A. And some of our speakers are going to be able to actually go back through Slack and answer some of those for you as well. Thanks for staying with me. Um, since you've already had to listen to me way too much, um, let's get started introducing our creative leaders for the path to creative director. Um, since I can't see your beautiful faces, um, I'm going to imagine that you're cheering or clapping at home as I introduce everyone. Don't let me down. <laughs> So please welcome our Path to Creative Director panel, consisting of um, Anita Holman, exec Executive Creative Director and Brand Strategist at Interrupt in Sylvania, Ohio, Anna Diedrichs, Creative Director at the Cincinnati Children's Hospital, Brandon Pridget, Founder and CEO at Night Owl Creative in Mason, Ohio, Denise Olding, Creative Director at Ingrid Design in Louisville, Kentucky, Katie Clements, Creative Director at CVR in Indianapolis, Indiana. So let's jump in. I want to start with our viewers getting a little background from each of you on the panel. So in three, four minutes-ish, give us a quick overview of your design background and your experiences getting to your current role. And maybe let's start with um, Anita and then you can always popcorn to another panelist. Um, All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kick it off. Uh, so great to be here. I appreciate everyone um, hopping on for the panel. Uh, so my career in graphic design started at Bowling Green. I went through the art department there um, and graduated with graphic design. Uh, funny story, I started in art education uh, and went into a classroom my first week at um, Bowling Green my sophomore year and no one cared about art at the time. There were little kids and I said, I've got to change. And so I ended up getting into the only class that was open was graphic design, thank goodness, um, and started my career there. Um, for anyone that is a student right now, make friends with your teachers because I had two offers because of recommendations from the teachers. Uh, I actually didn't have to send out a resume, but because of the teacher's support. Um, so I moved into a graphic design role for about three years. Um, I was the only designer there entry level. I learned a lot, probably wasn't great to help my skills. So I quickly moved into another agency, Roman Peshoff, which was a really strong marketing PR firm um, where I grew from a senior art director up through ACD. Uh, learned a lot, great uh, creative director there to help mentor 
and moved me along. And then after 12 years there, moved to Interrupt, where I am right now, um, came in as an associate creative director and am at this point uh, an executive um, creative director. Um, so 11 years at this job um, and have definitely learned a lot over, over all of my career, but definitely over the last 11 years. I'll kick it over to Denise, your first on my list. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I am, a, I think this is the Cincinnati area, a lot of people. I'm, I'm a University of Cincinnati graduate. Um, back in those days, um, the design school was, it was a no portfolio um, uh, uh, admission at that point. It was, it was really based on your achievements in high school academically. Uh, there were people from all across the, the world in that class of mine of 30 people. It was really super fantastic and a great experience. It was one of those programs that I still talk about today, which is sort of crazy, but it was so formative and, and uh, interesting and met so many, so many great people. And one of the big things I wanted to talk about was this co-op program that they had that really was foundational to my beginnings. Um, and really, I still look back at it as a, such a fond memory. It, it, um, my first job, you compete against the classmates, your own classmates to, for positions that are posted through the, the, um, the office there in uh, Cincinnati. And uh, my first job was, uh, I was a designer at uh, uh, Swanky Hayden Connell Architects in New York on Park Avenue. Um, it was crazy um, and um, got to go back there a couple of times. We were working on the Statue of Liberty um, renovation at the time. I got to do the bathroom signs and yeah. uh, stuff like that. So it was super fun. And then that place is very international, and very interesting for a kid that really was just so beginning in design that after your two and a half years in, you, you go into that. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to go to LA, um, worked uh, in a firm that did a lot of Disney's communications and this is pre-computer era. So we were still uh, meeting with illustrators that were doing paintings on boards and sending them over to us that we were photographing and putting into board layouts um, with all those kinds of uh, amber, amber lifts and crazy things like that, stack cameras. And I worked for Huffy Bikes later on um, and also went back to New York a couple more times. So I just want to say that that co-op program as, as leaders now in the industry, if you can support that kind of uh, experience for young people, it's really important. It needs to be a paid thing. It's not a freebie thing. Uh, they need to be paid so they can eat and uh, uh, have rent and things. Uh, it, it really builds a strong uh, future. And for the person that's looking for those kinds of experiences, you have a lot to offer um, energy and um freshness to uh, to firms that have been around for a long time. So I really would love love to see more of that going on. Um, it's even easier now in this virtual world that we can do. Um, so um, I uh, ended up after school a lot like you, Anita. I had a, um, a wonderful faculty member that um, that um, offered a uh, interview situation for another firm that was came up from Louisville, Kentucky, and I thought I'd be in Kentucky for six months, and I'm still in Kentucky. So uh, um, in my family, uh, that was not a, a great place to want to live, but I'll just tell you, it is a great place to live. Jacqueline can tell you that too from uh, the AIGA here in Louisville. Um, I have my own design firm uh, after I left that company for about 18 years. Um, and then I wanted to lighten up and uh, joined another firm, Anchor Design. I've been there for now for 12 years um, as their uh, creative director. I am part of the executive leadership board um, and uh, it's been a great experience. So um, my, my big thing is get a good education and then actually mm -hmm. just reach out and try to get yourself those experiences because um, it really... Um, still uh, influences me to this day, all those, all those lessons along the way. So, awesome. all right. I want to hear about children's hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so I was, a, I was, a, <laughs> I was a, a, a patient there years and years ago when I was a little mm -hmm. one. So I'm very interested to hear what's going on over there. Um, well, let me tell you, I'm Anna Diederichs. I'm currently serving as the creative director for Cincinnati children's. And um, I started um, with my education out uh, with the 
BA in communication from the University of Wisconsin, and then followed that up with the BFA from the Illinois Institute of Art. And I actually started my design career in-house. So um, it's a kind of an interesting experience. I ended up working in-house for both the city of Chicago and the Chicago Public Schools, two big, really large institutions that were public. And then I sort of flipped and switched into the agency side of the house. So cut my teeth in the agency, both um, in Chicago, um, worked at Upshot, and then moved to Cincinnati and worked at Barefoot Proximity. So I also not only switched from doing a lot of the visual design um, print work, I actually started to do a lot of digital work too. So um, I actually ended up uh, art directing under both. And then I started a family. And so suddenly flying, uh, you know, my clients were in Florida and different places and it was very difficult from a work-life balance perspective. So started to look again at in-house and ended up at Cincinnati Children's and I have been there ever since. So going on um, 11 years now. And I would say that um, having that ability to sort of expose myself to both the print side of the world and the digital side of the world. And like you, Denise, I started during the cut and paste days. Uh, Photoshop was in version one when I graduated college. Mm -hmm. So um, really uh, kind of growing with the industry and evolving with it has been a really interesting experience and uh, you just don't know where it's gonna go. So trying to sort of immerse yourself in kind of riding the wave a little bit is sort of what um, I did throughout my entire career, which allowed me to sort of evolve and pull in those additional skill sets into into my world. And now, um, again, as the cre uh, creative director for Cincinnati Children's, I get to not only lead my design team, but I also get to work with a lot of um, agency partners, freelancers, other people that are helping sort of round out our um, creative visual design system. And that's a segue to Brandon from Night Owl, <laughs> actually one of our uh, partners. I had a feeling I was going to be next yeah. after this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think um, it's it's refreshing to hear uh, some of the other creative directors talk about their, their journey because, yeah, for me, I was uh, I went to Columbus College of Art and Design to be an illustrator. So I spent four years doing, doing the more of the painting and the traditional uh, art thing and really wasn't crazy about the design field. Uh, but when I graduated, I quickly realized I didn't want to be a starving artist. So I had to change, change fields pretty quickly. Um, so I pretty much had to start uh, from square one in terms of really building up my skills from the design field. Um, so my early, my early days in, in the industry was as a production artist. I did that for years and then kind of moved up to designer, to art director, all the pretty much slowly up the line. Um, so it took a while. I, I think it was for me, it was definitely learning on the job uh, with a couple of agencies that I worked at. Um, from there, like I said, I had an opportunity to, as I changed jobs every few, few years or so, like most people did, you know, when you're young, you, <laughs> you get a job and you change after about three years. Um, I slowly got better opportunities to end up agencies that allowed me to kind of grow and learn not only the design part of it, but, but the strategy and, and the business side of it. So, you know, after I'd say maybe 10 years of, of what I was doing, I ended up as a associate creative director at the last agency that I worked at. Um, and then the, the economy went in the wrong direction. So everybody pretty much in our department lost their jobs. And instead of looking for another job, I decided to start my own firm. And from there is kind of how I ended up taking on the role as creative director, you know, besides wearing 5,000 other hats, that's pretty much one of the roles that I that I, that I hold for myself. So it was a long journey to get here, but um, it was definitely a learning journey for me. So I think, uh, I think more than that, I think I wanna hear what Katie's background is about. Well, Brandon, I am really jealous of you because I wanted to go to the um, Columbus College of Art and Design, but my parents said no, because they didn't have enough money. And I have a twin sister. So um, we both went into art, I wanted to be a painting major. These are my paintings behind me. And my parents were like, no, you can't do painting because you're not gonna get a 401k. And what about health insurance? And <laughs> they weren't gonna pay for my college if I went for painting. So I went for graphic design and um, 
the funny thing is um, it was a challenging time when we graduated because it was right after 9-11. So it was kind of like today, like the unknown uncertainty. We didn't know how to find a job. Um, my twin sister and I were both at Ball State University and we were servers at Outback Steakhouse. And so we decided, okay, we're gonna go to Indianapolis. We're gonna be servers and we're gonna get design jobs. And that didn't happen. <laughs> Couldn't be servers at Outback Steakhouse and find a design job. So we were like, okay, what are we gonna do next? So we started saying we're twins and sending out to all the agencies, come meet us. You know, We're trying to use our twin powers and it got our foot in the door but no one wanted to hire two people at the same time, let alone, you know, one. So we were like, okay, now what are we going to do? So we were trying to think of different strategies. So there was one day we were driving down College Avenue and there was a unique home store that had really modern furniture, um, really crazy like rugs and all kinds of like modern stuff. And so we were like, let's go in there and let's go ask for a job. Because I'm sure if we get a job there, we're gonna meet creative people and then that's how we'll get our foot in the door. So we walked in, the store was only like a week old and we were like, please hire us so we can meet creative people. And the owner hired us and we had met so many people from the advertising community that it was awesome. We made, um, we didn't get jobs right away, but we were able to cultivate those relationships with people in the design community. And um, my sister got a job at Publicis um, Group right away at an agency. And I got um, a job at a local men's magazine. So she was honing her skills as a designer. I was learning how to be an art director, art directing photo shoots, decided I loved it. Um, I loved working for the magazine because after it was gone, you know, I used Cork Express, got it to the printer, and we got to party for a week. So we didn't have to do any work for a week. Um, but that didn't last, last very long. Um, magazines then, even now, it's hard to find. So I was like, oh, shoot, it's going under. So then my sister hired me at Publicis, where I was an art director, and we both um, worked on the Simon Malls account. So we loved fashion. So that was fun. I got to work there for eight years, made my way to senior art director. And then the recession hit and I knew that they were going to close. And so I was like, oh no, I got to find another, another job. Knew of somebody else who was leaving their job at CVR, called them up and said, do you think I can get your job? You think you like it there? And he's like, mm, it's okay. See if you like it. And I've now been there for six and a half years, went from um, associate creative director to now creative director. Wow. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that kind of gets me thinking too. Um, the fact that creative director can mean many different things, um, different to nearly everyone on this board, but there's a lot of shared experiences. Um, and obviously we don't have, all have a twin like Katie does to like split creative duties, right? Um, so from, I'm curious from managing, you know, from maybe managing a team to being lead designer or strategist, copywriter um, into business, I mean, all of the above, um, what does your role of creative, creative director look like at your respective company now? And maybe what we can do is start out with um, Brandon, I'm curious about your perspective on that one. And then um, anyone else can feel free to chime in as well. Yeah, you know, I think it's much different for me um, being the owner of the, of the firm versus when I was kind of in that role at another agency. Mm -hmm. um, because again, it's so many more things going on at the same time for me versus just having that position um, prior to this. But, you know, for me, uh, it's, it's more from the management side of meeting my designers and my developers, you know, keeping them on the same page, keeping, keeping things moving, making sure we're staying on strategy, you know, from a brand standard guide, like for, for instance, you know, Cincinnati Children's brand standard guide where, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you got to make sure they, they're really, um, paying attention to the details and things that have been spelled out. 
Um, so I think for me, it's really more of keeping a strong team in, in line of going in the right direction for whatever project we're working on. Um, early on, but that, that role was more, more hands-on for me where I was, you know, really jumping in and doing a lot of design work. So um, I, I've had night out for the past uh, 10 years and, you know, each year that's gone by and I've really allowed myself to step back uh, a step or two from doing the design work um, and, and really trusting my team to, to handle the workload because as creatives, you know, we all, I mean, we kind of territorial of our creative mm -hmm. works. So it's hard to not do shit, but like, all right, forget about it. Just move out the way. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. So, um, so really over the past, you know, 10 years, I, I have allowed myself to build the right team and, and just really be almost be like the cheerleader and that liaison that just makes sure that they're, they have what they need for me. Um, whether it's a project scope or creative brief or just support in general um, to, to really do what they do best so that, you know, I can really focus my energy on running the business. So. That's great. Yeah, I think, I think supporting people is the biggest thing. Like when you mm -hmm. become, I even think ACD to creative director, it's letting go of a lot of the design work mm -hmm. and mentoring people and supporting them to become their best selves um, and listening to their ideas. And that might not necessarily be the idea you would have, but right. letting go of what your idea is and letting them fly with theirs mm -hmm. and then supporting them with the resources they need to make their idea the best. I think that's been the biggest transition within my career is that I'm doing more supporting stuff and producing stuff and finding people resources and giving them contacts than actually doing all the design work. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of behind the scenes of mm -hmm. making sure, and, and a lot of times the team doesn't even know where might be fighting for more hours or more time or making sure they have the right input. Um, because, you know, as you get to this point where, as you said, 100% agree, where we're supporting our team, you know, they're, they're the ones that are putting the work out and, and I want them to get the credit for it. You know, my job is to do everything possible to make sure the best thing goes out the door. And, and now it's shifted from me designing stuff to supporting the team to be able to do that. Um, I do a lot of brand strategist um, work as well. So working with the research team to make sure they have really great insights because when they get the insights then they're able to create something amazing going forward so it is it's a big shift um and you have to be okay that you're not designing every day but to see what comes out of the agency the amazing stuff that the different minds and uh, uh, agree with you katie i may not agree with their solution but it's right and it's theirs and i think that's what a great creative director does mm -hmm. I would say from an in-house perspective, um, I have an additional role agreed with everyone. You are really charged with um, setting up your team for success. Um, and that's how you define yourself as a, as, a, as a good creative director is how successful your team is. Um, on the in-house side, um, it's very different from, than an agency where people come to you and are engaging you for that creative work. A lot of what I do is helping to position my team internally so that they can find those creative opportunities and sort of add the value to uh, the work that Cincinnati Children's does. Um, we're in the business of healthcare. We're not in the business of design or marketing brand strategy. So we bring that role to the table. So really um, meeting with the people we call our clients, which are other internal Cincinnati Children's departments and divisions, it's a lot about showing how what we do matters to what they do, which is a very um, different experience as a creative director to not only be responsible for having a team produce that work, but also making sure that work, finding that work for the team, being able to um, talk to from a business perspective. And Brandon, I'm sure as a, as a business owner, you've got to you've got business development as part of your, your role. So being able to find the opportunities, position your team, and then deliver good creative is also part of that creative director role um, for all of us. Yeah. I kind of want to jump off of that a little more too. Um, 
I know that a lot of people uh, watching along may be in designer positions or art director positions, looking at a creative director position being um, excited and aspire to get there. And kind of thinking through that, I know I'm sure you've had conversations with your employees too, but um, how have you um, evolved or learned new traits over the years or flex different muscles? Um, and what has kind of come up to the top of being the most important design skills or even just soft skills you've learned over the course of your career and why have they been so valuable? I, I would say for me, question. like learning from mm -hmm. the very beginning, like knowing how to do production work, I think has been invaluable because knowing how to set up a file right or how to organize where things are is something that I think sometimes we as artists, we're messy and we just have stuff all over our desktop and then we go on vacation and then nobody can find your files. I think knowing how to set stuff up right at the beginning has been invaluable where I try and teach that to people now. Like you might have the most awesome idea, but if you don't leave your files in a way or if you don't know how much you can spend on that image or those type of like practical things at the beginning, I think can just mess up and blow up a whole project. So I think if people know how to start something right from the beginning and know how to, you know, put their files in order, know where people can find things, you're supporting that next person that has to touch it, mm -hmm. which makes everything way more efficient. Yeah, I guess for me, um, and I talked to, so I have two senior art directors that are on track for associate creative directors. And I talk to them quite a bit about presentation skills. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most important things that you need to hone, continue to grow because you could have an amazing idea. And if you can't sell it dynamically, you are not gonna create confidence with your client and they're probably not gonna buy the idea. You could sell almost anything if you are a good presenter. Obviously, it needs to be based in, in good design and good thinking. But um, as they were growing throughout their career, they would come in after presentations. What was the good? Where could I grow? I mean, that's something that you should be asking people in your agency if you're working right now. How can I better my presentation skills? Um, what can I do? Where, you know, what's good and where can I grow? Um, I would say that's one of the most important things I tell people. Mm -hmm. Denise, me, I'm curious. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Anna. <laughs> I was going to say, um, for me, one of the biggest uh, things that I learned along the way that really helped um, sort of help me break through into the more senior roles um, on the creative track was just the idea of picking your battles. Um, as a designer, as a young designer, um, I would go to the mat for everything. Like, you know, every design decision, if, a you know, if I'm dealing with a client and the client's like, oh, you know, I don't really know if I, if I like this, I mean, it would be kind of a battle for me to sort of say, to, to not fight for every single thing. And I think, um, you know, in the course of a project, especially with clients, you know, there's a lot that I can achieve, but, um, you know, the client has their sort of parameters as well. And it just becomes kind of a, a good, like a negotiation between me as a designer and them as a client. And then I would, if I made the mistake of sort of going to the mat for everything, it became a situation where you just become a difficult designer to work with, which isn't what you want to set yourself up to do. So I kind of go through my own internal process of, um, is this my battle? Does it make a huge difference if I let this one go? And most importantly, you know, if, if we, if it doesn't happen my way, can I live with that? So I think um, that, sort of knowing when to sort of put your foot down as a designer um, versus being able to sort of compromise with your client is a key skill that I think, you know, you learn over time through experience. But I think that was one that was super important for me to learn, especially since, like I said, as a stubborn young designer, I wanted everything to go the way that I wanted it to. And, you know, that's not necessarily how the real world is in terms of business, so. Great. I was just going to add, um, Denise, I'm curious your perspective on this as well. Well, um, this is a loaded question for me because I feel <laughs> like um, for 
soft skills are so important. Um, I think, you know, once you get to a senior level in your, you know, an experience level in your work, there's some quote out there or something about like how many hours you have to do something to become an expert. And I don't know mm -hmm. what it is, but in, in this world, it's probably like five or six years. You're really kind of really good at what you're doing if, if, if you're doing a good job at it by then. So the mechanics of, you know, making art and um, um, writing briefs and, and all of that is part of the career challenge. Um, um, and um, developing your business sense is definitely very important on the, on the, as you, as you grow, um, because those are the things that you're invited into big strategy meetings, you know, where can we go in the future, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. That's really super fun thinking. It's very creative. It's not design, but I still think of it as design. It's very design related. It's, you're just solving problems. So um, I think that's the fun part of design is solving the problems and figuring out good ways to to come up with solutions of whether you're doing the typesetting on the screen or whether you're um, in strategy meetings with clients. But I guess the soft skills to me are really the thing that make a really great creative director because um, the um, the skills of leadership are are you know across all careers, right? That a sense of um, of stability you know, through the experience, right, that you can deliver trust um, with your expertise um, and bring hope to the team, you know, and to the client that you can solve problems and make them uh, surprisingly wonderful and successful. But I think those are the those um, soft skills that you learn in life as a family member when you're a kid or um, in relationships with your friends and family, your engagement with your community. Those are the things that to me make a really great creative director because you have to bridge the gap amongst a lot of different types of people, whether they're creatives, writers, accountants, mm -hmm. lawyers, um, uh, business developing people. So, you know, it, it's, um, it's important that you that I think the richer life experience you have, the better director, creative director you can be. Um, and um, so for me, it's the soft skills. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the mm -hmm. other skills are required, but the soft skills make a great creative director. And what we found too in our company is that some people don't really want to direct. They, mm -hmm. they don't. They really want to be the art director. They really want to be making things. They, that's their joy and that's their passion and that's what they should keep doing. I think in the, in the, our firm, I think sometimes people get uh, in our, I guess not in our firm, but in, in our industry as a general is sort of like, you know, EC, the executive creative director, or creative director is like the big money bucket, right? So if you think about it like that, people are like always looking to do that. But, um, but, but you got to think about, is that really what you want to do? Because some of it is, you know, budgets and schedules and, you know, real life business problems, you know. Um, uh, so, and Brandon, I know you know that from being a business owner, it's just like, it is part of the deal, right? So um, you might not want to be the creative director um, if, if you really look at the detail of the job description. You might love being the senior designer that really gets to work with 30 different logos all day and play around. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it's just something to think about. I think the soft skills are the things that really make sure. a, in its experience a really good creative director, reliable. Yeah. I appreciate worthy. yeah. I appreciate that response, Denise. Um, and I think mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Maybe people can correct us in the Slack, but I think it's 10,000 hours. A practice or is it something 10, like that? I, would I don't like know. To know. I what said it, it out loud, and now I'm worried like I got it wrong. But, <laughs> the wrong. Uh, That's what I was saying too. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I yeah. wanted to um, touch on something too. Um, actually, before I do, um, I'll say to everybody watching that we're going to take some of the Q and A in the Slack and the um, in YouTube Live at 12:45. So we'll we'll get into those. There's already a whole bunch of questions in there. So excited to get your responses. Um, but I wanted to touch on something that Anna and Anita, you kind of already brought up in some responses. And it's this idea of um, what advice would you give to a designer or somebody on your team 
who might be struggling with their career path. They might be looking at like, hey, am I going after the right thing here? Um, what do you say to them? <laughs> okay, I can go first. <laughs> I didn't want to talk over Anna. <laughs> um, you know, this is this is a tough one. Um, you know, because everyone's different, and I, you know, I talk to the creative team on a regular basis of understanding where they are, where they want to go, um, and what I have them talk to me about is, you know, what's your long term plan. Um, we talk about the pieces and parts that they need to do to be able to achieve that. And that's within our agency. So we are very clear about a roadmap. And I agree that not everyone wants to continue. Some people are really happy where they are. And it's great because we get a very experienced person in the role that they're at. Now, for people that maybe they don't know if it's the right job, I talk to, I do all the, the hiring for the creative, um, and I talk to quite a bit of people, you know, that are looking to change, and I'm not sure if I should change, and, you know, as I am talking to them, you know, they need to look at their roadmap, um, you know, where do they want to end up in, you know, three years, five years, ten years, and, and sometimes it's really hard for young designers. Um, I would say one of the most important thing is your portfolio is a reflection of who you are and it's how you're going to get the next job. So if you're in a job that you don't necessarily like or you're not feeling um, that the work that you're doing best reflects you, then you probably need to search out places that better reflects the kind of work that you want to be doing, um, whether it's happening immediately or um, where you want to be to be mentored by the people there. So I think you have to look internally at at what you, where you want to go, and and you can talk to senior people at your agency or the place that you're working to figure out the steps to be able to get there. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I think uh, I think uh, going off of Anita, I, I, one of the things that I always come back to is is what what's your why, you know? So what and it's, and it can go beyond from a career standpoint, what, what is really getting you up in the morning? And I mean, that's honestly, that's one of the things I ask when I interview designers, uh, when I bring new team members on, because, you know, it's everybody, you know, there's a lot, there's a ton of great designers, right? I mean, there, people can, I mean, there's people design me out of the water, but you know, what, what is, what's driving you? What's, what's behind, you know, if you're saying, you know, I want to change careers or I want to move up positions, what is it? What, what's, what's the why behind it? Is it just for the title? Is it because, you know, you know, you watch Mad Men and you want to be Don Draper? Like what, I mean, what, you know, so what is it that that's really fueling the fire for you um, that gets you out of bed? Because I think that comes through in your work. Um, so if, you know, for me, like, like uh, Denise was talking about the, the business side of things. I mean, I quickly found that I really enjoy that part of, of, of this, you know, I, I, I fought the way uh, Anna would fight, you know, trying to fall on the sword for every piece of design work. But then I quickly found like, you know, this business side is a challenge. It's a different type of challenge. And so, but when, the, when at the end of the day, you know, my why is my family, you know, it's, it's my wife and my kids. So, you know, being able to use this as a tool to, you know, work with clients in a, that, you know, put good into the world. So when my kids, you know, they grow up and they see what a day work on, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's working with children and, you know, it, it's, it's working with other health organizations or, or other institutions, but are not problems that, you know, we're doing something good, you know, using our talents for something better than just, you know, selling a car or, you know, selling some widget that, you know, yeah. next year the 2.0 is going to come out and I got to sell it again. You know, I think that's my why. So I always want to try to, you know, get people to ask themselves, that's like, what's, what's inside you that's want to motivate you to, to move to, to the next level. And then at that point, you know, like I said, as Anita said, I mean, there's, there's planning and there's, you got to sit down and you got to put pen to paper and you know, like say, what's your five year? What's hell? What's your one year? Because sometimes that's intimidating mm -hmm. to people. They're like, Oh, five years. You know, I, I can't think past, mm -hmm. you know, next Tuesday. So, you know, take baby steps and just, you know, really, really define, you know, if I want to go here, I always say back your way to, to success. So mm -hmm. if your end goal is you like to why stop a creative director, but you know, if, if you if your end goal is creative director, now let's put a plan that works backwards from that just to, to help you kind of move in that direction. Because then it, I think it gives you something that's tactile um, and, and that you can really say and measure to and say, okay, this week I'm focusing on this because this is going to get me to the next step. This is going to get me to, to where I want to go, whether it's a year, whether it's two years. And now that's out of that, just be patient, mm -hmm. you know, because it does take time. I mean, you, you have to really figure out, you know, make your mistakes and then learn from it and then 
take that step instead of just trying to jump into the you know creative director role just just because because yeah. like now i'm a creative director <laughs> now what <laughs> you know what I'm i was a good designer but that doesn't mean i'm going to be a great creative director Sure. No, that's a that's a great point, Brandon. And I actually want to kind of loop in a secondary question on that too. Um, and Anna and Katie, uh, I want to get your thoughts on these as well. But um, so keep thinking about about the designers struggling with their career path. But I also kind of want to look at another angle where we talk about say there's a young designer on your team that expresses interest in being promoted um, to maybe a senior level role. What do you look for when deciding if they're ready for that promotion? Well, we look for, I guess, can you work with people? I think when you start getting into more of a leadership role, how do you get along with not only the creative team, but with talking with people in media or talking with the account team? We did a study where we, we all went and we found out what our personalities were. Mm -hmm. to learn how to communicate better as an agency, just everybody internally, because we went from Salesforce Tower and we were moving into a new building to an open concept. So we wanted to make sure everybody that we replaced everybody in groups that they could work with each other. And one thing I love about CVR is that I call us the misfits because we're so different. There's not that one personality, you know, that some agencies have where they all kind of look the same or they all do the same work. Um, we're all totally different, which mm -hmm. I love that we're quirky and there's certain people that you have to communicate differently with to get something that you need from them. And that's the biggest thing I look at when somebody wants to go into a new role. It's, mm -hmm. you know, how to talk to that person to get the best creative. Do you know how to talk to this person to get the best direction? Um, that's a skill I try and help those people learn. Um, so they're not just stuck and getting frustrated all the time because they're not getting what they need. But it's, I think it's really, how are you asking that person for the information? So that's a biggie for me. Yeah. And just kind of piggybacking off of what Katie's saying. Um, yes, definitely attitude and personality are the two things that I look for. Um, Similarly, um, we all the creative team at Children sits on the fifth floor and they call, we call ourselves the Island of Misfit Toys. So we totally fit with that same kind of, um, especially in a, an in-house situation where, you know, primarily everyone is in, you know, a doctor, physician, some type of clinical care uh, role. Uh, we really do sometimes feel like we're sort of um, fish out of water to some degree. But, um, you know, that presents as many opportunities as it does obstacles. So just finding the right person um, is how much, um, you know, what's their personality? Are they, um, we're, we look for resourcefulness. Um, it's, it's, do you need everything sort of handed to you? Or are you able to sort of dig around, play detective, gather information, um, talk to people, and really um, identify the opportunities where the creative team can be uh, have great impact or, or be of assistance. So I think that, um, you know, whenever, and, you know, I have uh, younger designers on my team and they all um, are working on a path to, you know, to the next step. And what we typically do is we meet and we identify to, you know, what Brandon was saying, sort of working backwards, where do you want to go? What does success look like for you? And then sort of um, identifying, um, those hard and soft skills that you need to develop in order to move to that next position so that uh, there is a goal and sort of a roadmap for how um, someone works towards that. But definitely attitude, um, resourcefulness, tenacity, those are things that I look for um, in leaders yeah. on my team. I think uh, I'd like I to think... add something. Go ahead. Sorry. Brandon. I think Anita, to, to, to take something that Anita had said, it, it's very applicable to, to this topic is the presentation skills. I think, you you know, if, if a young designer comes to me and says, hey, you know, I want to I want to advance my career. My friend, you know, you have to sell it. You I think you have to sell yourself. And, it, and it's and it's also it's a sign of how you would sell a project, as you said, to to a client or, or uh, you know, whatever, because I think if you don't believe in yourself and you don't believe you deserve to move up, you know, I mean, 
it starts with you, you know? So, and I think, you know, as, as creative directors or, or any kind of manager, I think you get a sense, you can get a sense of that. I mean, I think you, you go off of that and you say, okay, you know, this person doesn't even really believe that they want, they, they deserve it. Even if, if you believe that they do, I think they don't, they're not even selling themselves. So I think, you know, having presentation skills and having data and having, you know, say, really come to the table and say, hey, look, here's what I've done. Yeah. You know, here, here's where our growth happened because of what I contributed. And here's how I've interacted with the team and, and what, what have you, whatever that role would be. I think now you're coming to the table ready, ready with your guns loaded and saying, hey, listen, I'm, I'm asking you this because I believe that I'm ready to move up. So what can we do versus like asking permission? It's almost like, listen, you know, I'm ready for this, this challenge. So and here's why it, either, you, you know, you, you're going to be on board. I'm going to tell you why we need to be on board. And I'm going to sell you on that because I think that's that shows your passion. So, I mean, that's what I think. I mean, what do you think, Denise? That's exactly what I was going to say is you have to demonstrate it and you have to claim it and you got to ask for it. Um, you, you, you have to do all those things. So sometimes you don't know how to demonstrate that you have the abilities to do something. But um, Anna had mentioned on that, that, you know, go ahead and be your investigator, give yourself something that you can, uh, can, yeah. can start to show the skills that you need for the, the promotion that you're looking for. Um, you have to be your own advocate. So, um, and you have to be able to sell. Um, if, if you're in an organ, I would just caution this. If you're in an organization where you have to sell yourself all the time, it might mm -hmm. not be the right organization for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, that's not really great leadership on the top. If they're, if right. they're really uh, not seeing what you're doing um, and recognizing you for it, there's something else going on there, but you do, you are your own advocate. You, you know, the job, people lean into a job and say, well, this is a job. And so I've got my job. I got my paycheck. I got my job. So it's, it's up to the, the office to tell me what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to do stuff. That is not um, advanced material. That's not advancing yourself. You need to be your, you need to say, this is what I want. This is how I think we should do this thing or how we should solve it. Yeah. And come forward organized, clear, communicate, and be ready. Um, you, it, it, this is how you develop. Lead. You have to show that you can lead. Um, so you have to demonstrate and you have to ask. And um, eventually you'll get it, you know, but you just have to demonstrate and be your own advocate and yeah. put yourself out there. It's not up to the boss to give you the opportunity. Right. It's up to you to get an opportunity. So right. put yourself in the ring, you know, you got to get in there. Yeah, um, I appreciate that, Denise. I think like, I know I personally have been there and I'm sure a lot of us have been there as well. Um, I do want to jump. I there's so many good questions that have been going on and um, we only have 10 minutes left. So what I do actually wanna do is I wanna bring in Ashton and Brooke um, to field some questions from YouTube Live and Slack. Um, I'll actually jump off and ask one that I'm like super excited to hear about. But what we might have to do is have um, one panelist answer per question, unless you're like, this was my question, I need to ask it. Um, so just like, <laughs> Either like yell, stand up, put your hand up, um, whatever you want to take that question. But I do want to kick it off with um, Vanessa had a question in the Slack that I think is a um, great thing to hear from a, um, a designer level, but it's how do you respond in real time conversation with a client asking for something you and or your firm would consider a bad design or bad idea? Anybody want to take that one? Uh, yeah. Can I take that one? <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, are you going to be talking about me? Absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. No, you know, I think um, you know, we talk about soft skills and whatnot. I think one of the things I learned over the years or developed was um, the ability to be gracious. Um, I'm very grateful for the clients I have, um, especially Cincinnati Children. They're a fantastic organization, and I could not imagine working with anybody. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, um, you know, and and honestly, um, Anna can can chime in on it. I mean, for me, you know, number one, uh, I bugged her for two years <laughs> to, to work with the organization, um, but that was my passion because I was really one. I was passionate about the organization. Um, 
But at the same time, like they, she knows, like you know, what, whatever project comes to our desk, I mean, we're grateful for the fact that we have that work. Um, especially being a small firm, I'm like, hey, there are a lot of people hungry right now. So I'm I'm always grateful for any project. So when there are situations where I might not agree, you know, visually or I think it's off the mark, um, regardless of the client, uh, I always make a point. I say, listen, I'm going to tell you my point of view. Here's what I think we should be doing. Here's why we should be doing it. Here's why this is either off strategy or what have you. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your decision. I want you to be happy. Um, I will I will fight to the end as far as, as making sure I'm keeping you in the right direction. Um, but I want to go on record as that. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, if you decide that you don't want to go that direction, you know, I mean, you're, you're paying us to come to the table to do something for you, right? So we're going to give you our expertise. Uh, we're not here to regurgitate what you give us because, like, why would you hire us at that point? Um, you're, you're hiring us for our thinking. So I'm going to give you our unique thinking. Um, at that point, if you do not agree with it, either we're not a right fit for your firm or or it's just like I said, on this one, like I said, I'm not going to fall on the sword for it. I mean, I'm just going to, hey, listen, you know, we gave you sound advice. I think this is uh, the better direction. But if you want to go ahead, you know, hey, because maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe I'll maybe I'll learn from, from something from that and say, OK, you know, I thought this was off the mark, but now that I've seen it in live production, you know, I can see where you got there. But for the most part, it's just really about, you know, just <laughs> you got you got to be real uh, uh, political in terms of, mm -hmm. of, of smart how you how you respond to to disagreeing with the client. But I think it's I think you can articulate it in a way to say, listen, I don't I don't think this is the right move, but but you know, I will be more than happy to do whatever you want to do. Sure. No, I appreciate that response. Um, I'm going to kick it to Jacqueline. She's got a great question for us too. You might give us one sec. We're going to unmute her real quick. Am I here? Yep, we can hear you. Hi, this is Jacqueline, president of AIGA Louisville, and I'm helping give some voice to these questions. Um, first off, I want to ask Ashley's question. Uh, first part, we'll just start there. Um, were you ready to become a creative director before you landed in that role? And how did you practice patience? Who wants to take that one? Anna, what do you think? I guess I'll take it. Um, <laughs> since we're all sitting here staring at you. Um, like, oh. um, I think that uh, to say that you're ready, I think um, it's maybe a different question that I ask myself. It's sort of like, do I, do I have the do I have the skills or do I have the interest or passion to do what this job requires of me? Um, I won't say that I ever feel 100% ready to take on something. I think it's more of a um, roll up your sleeves, jump in there and, and start working. Um, I feel like the biggest challenge for me was moving from directing people on projects to directing people as employees. I think that that's a different skill set that falls outside of design. It comes more into the business side of things. But, you know, when you move from working in an art director role and, you know, helping guide a team visually to doing that, but also approving, you know, vacation time, that's, you have a whole different subset of, of tasks that go along with the professional development, the development of the people that work under you, making sure they're happy, making sure they uh, feel like they have those challenges. Um, that's, to be quite honest, that's a that's a kind of uh, a influx and evolving for me, just even as I sit here now, um, I, I'm learning and growing in that role of creative director as, you know, other employees are growing into their roles as art directors. So I feel like, um, part of uh, my sort of obstacle was my kind of own uh, worry about self-editing, taking things going, oh no, I'm not ready for that. Therefore, I'm just gonna be here, you know, until some magic sign comes out of the sky and tells me I'm ready to be a creative director. Um, sometimes it's just having a little bit of faith in your own abilities to sort of roll with that. And I think that if, if you're coming at it from a place of, I, I love this industry. I like what I do, and I feel ready to take on at least that challenge. I think that's pretty much all there is. 
there's never a hundred percent ready. Awesome. Um, we also have a question from Brooke. So Brooke, you there? Hi, yes. Hi, Brooke from um, AIJ Cincinnati joining you guys here. I'm the merge director. Um, I've got MS with fielding questions in the Slack channel and we have a lot of conversation happening um, on one thread from Kat, Emily, and Jen. So the original question was, how would you suggest, suggest developing soft skills when you're in a position that you don't have capacity to develop those soft skills? So for example, she's in a leadership role and um, doesn't have the time to focus on leading or mentoring. Mm. Um, and then kind of in a similar note, um, how can, how can those soft skills kind of evolve, um, in different settings, um, and have others, oh, and Jen was talking about how she feels like maybe she's missed her opportunity to, um, become a creative director and because she feels like she's been away for a little bit. So maybe how those soft skills can help help them kind of continue to grow? That was a loaded question. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot going on there. You know, I, it, personally, I don't feel like it's ever too late. Um, if you're looking at whether it's the next career path or, um, or ch shifting, let's see where you are. Um, I think you probably need to look at the job you're in and look at what as I was talking about earlier, kind of where you want to be and do you have the ability to get there in the role that you're at or in the company that you're at? So a lot of these companies, we do this where, you know, we ask people, is there a different area that you want to be focusing in because you feel like your strength is there? Um, and we're okay shifting some people um, where needed because they're better where they want to be. If you're looking at that and you're not feeling like there is that path, then you may want to start looking and it's not necessarily a great time right now. Um, and it doesn't have to be immediate, but you know, you should have a path um, to help get to where you are. You shouldn't feel like you have missed your, your point to be able to do that. Um, you know, the best thing is to find a mentor that can help you, that someone that is either in the company or potentially outside of the company that can help guide you on how to get there and what are the things you need, soft skills, hard skills um, that can help you do that. Awesome. I'd like to um, echo you... the, the mentorship uh, yeah. thing and the, the, I just want to echo the mentorship thing is really important. Um, and, and also peer, uh, peer help, because it's sometimes hard mm -hmm. to see yourself in the mirror. Um, so if, 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 you work on a team and are lucky enough to have a team around you, um, get on a call with somebody sometime and say, what do you think I'm good at? What do you think I'm bad at? What do you, you know, just do your own, your own little uh, focus group. Cause I think those are the things that, you know, some of the things we think we're good at are maybe some things that we're actually maybe not that good at, you know? Um, and then we have to uh, grow personally. So I think that, um, that constant, um, not constant, because it sounds so hard, but like, you know, you really do need to work on yourself and your, um, your abilities outside of um, color and type and proportion. Uh, you know, th these are the things that will make you a, le a good leader. So, um, uh, and, and being ready to hear those things is hard sometimes too, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, mm -hmm. we all have friends or great designers, but man, that one's difficult. Like, how do I tell her, you know, she's going to freak out, you know, how do I, but these are the things like if you can get a group of two or three, I have three people, we get together and we, we're just really honest with each other. Um, it's really helpful uh, to, you know, help each other out, you know, um, just be real honest of where, where you think you can grow and where you can't. And um, you know, some, some things are not going to change about certain people. They just, they're not going to change in a work mode anyway. Maybe if their prof personal life is very important to them, they might, but professionally, they're probably not going to change drastically. Uh, so yeah. um, I just say, try to look in the mirror honestly. And sometimes the best way to do that is to have other people tell you what they see. Yeah. No, you know thanks. To work on. thanks, Denise. Um, 
Gosh, I want to be, be mindful of everybody's time. I can't believe how fast that went. Um, I think that we've got so much great experience and oh, responses yeah. here. I know it's like, it's one o'clock, um, mm -hmm. uh, but so many great responses here. I think for the next Midwest Design Week, we might have to look at a two-parter. Um, so let us know on Slack if you would actually, you'd like that. Um, but uh, again, I want to say, Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you to our panel um, and our sponsors for the week. Uh, I want everybody to be reminded that um, you can look at more information on the website and then on our Slack channel as well. Um, and a reminder too that uh, there were so many good questions that we're gonna try to have um, some of the panelists here be able to jump in you know, throughout this week and answer some more of those for you just because yeah, you asked a ton of great questions that I want responses to as well. Um, so thank you again. Our next event um, is a workshop tonight. It's called Protest by Design, focusing on protest design and the science behind motivating people to take action. Um, there's no attendance limit either to this workshop, so hopefully see everyone there. Um, it's 7 p.m. Eastern, so thank you again, everyone, um, from Midwest Design Week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll hold on and make sure we get the okay by Ashton. We're still streaming, so hold on one second. Okay.